So, assuming that that's the case, and in this case it is, because we're going to just do it, and then we're going to sell bad, and we're going to show naked edges, which we already did, and we know there's nothing. So we know this is a good model. So if that's the case, then what do we need to do? I can't just take this and say, you know, save as, print, make it, please. I have to actually create a mesh, because this is a NURBS model, right? It's made out of surfaces, and printers print meshes. So you're going to need to send them either an OBJ, an STL, or a, or a Vermal 2.0. Um, which I just learned about recently. Vermal actually carries color information, so if you're going to Z-Core or uh, a printer that supports color breaks out, breakouts, uh, Vermal 2.0 is, uh, is the format that we prefer. So, there's two ways to do this. I can pick this and I can just do File, Export Selected, and I can set this to STL and give it a name. and hit save. All right, now, what it's going to do is it's going to mesh this. And my mesh controls are over on the other screen. Sorry, let me pull this over here. It's going to pop up this box, and it's going to give you the polygon options. You may see it, you may see it show up like this. Sorry, this keeps popping over to my other screen, which are the simple controls. And the simple controls Basically, what is the maximum distance between the original surface or solid and the polygon mesh created for the STL file? Okay, notice there's a tolerance in here. All right, this is extremely important. So let's cancel out of this for a second and just talk about the tolerance. If you go to Tool Options and, my, and we look at units, this model is built in inches. The absolute tolerance is 0 0.001, which tells me that either this is a huge model built to ridiculous tolerance, or it's a tiny model built to a reasonable tolerance. So let's figure out what we're looking at first. And I'm just going to throw a quick-ish dimension on here. Oops. Let's go to the front view. I'm just going to throw a quick dimension on here just to verify. Okay, 2.98. I already know I'm in inches, so this thing is less than three inches long. So this is small. All right, so if I go to options and look at my units and say, okay, here's my tolerance. All right, if this thing was in feet, then we would have a, we would have an issue. All right, because 0.001 units of feet is much different than 0.001 units of inches, right? So if I had a tiny thing that was set units like this, this tolerance may or may not make sense, all right? Consequently, the same thing. In millimeters, if I made this, if this model was in millimeters, 0.001 units of a millimeter is tiny, 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 like ridiculously tiny, all right? So this, this, Tolerance and how it relates back to the model units is important to have in mind. Okay, so let's set it back to where it was. In this case, it was inches, 0.001. And let's file export selected again and just take a look at what we've got. All right. So <clears throat> let's look at the simple controls. All right, so 0.01, all right, of an inch, since my file tolerance is 0.001, I can probably crank this down, right? and preview it, and I'm going to get a mesh that looks like this. All right. Now, here's the problem with this setting. Okay. And just because it's matching the file tolerance doesn't necessarily mean it's an ideal mesh for printing. And the reason that I say that is you'll notice that there's some longer triangles here, and there's some rectangly quads, and the mesh just isn't very dense, and there's a possibility that when this prints, you're actually going to see these, these mesh edges. You're going to see these facets. So for this thing, which is a very detailed object, now notice that the smaller, uh, the smaller areas are meshed more densely, but in the bigger stuff, you know, there's a little bit of curvature to this thing. So in the bigger stuff, you may actually see these facets. So we need to crank this up. So this isn't necessarily going to be a successful or it's going to be successful, but it's not necessarily ideal. So let's look at the detailed controls. Now, I told you I'd talk about uh, what my settings were and what Dale's settings were. So 
my settings that I've been using forever is I've been messing, I've been setting the density to one. I've been zeroing out everything else except for the maximum edge length and the maximum distance edge to surface. Now maximum distance edge to surface we've already talked about because that was the setting that was here, right? This is maximum distance edge to surface. And we've decided that we need a little bit more control than that. So going back in here, I always shut off refined mesh and pack textures. Um, I can't give you a, a really good reason other than the fact that I've been doing it for so long I can't remember why I started doing it. But um, pack textures uh, is, is if, you, if there's UV information, and so, uh, so we're going to set density to one. I'm going to zero out everything else except for maximum edge length and maximum distance edge to surface. So if we just if we leave this as 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 is, okay, this setting was the same that it was before, and we just changed the density. There shouldn't be much difference in change here, and you'll notice that there really isn't. In fact, to some extent, the density setting has allowed it to create more you know, little quads in here. So let's look at maximum edge length. Maximum edge length defines how long one of these sides can be. This is the longest that this can be. And right now we don't have it driven, so Rhino's just figuring out what it wants to do and go from there. If I crank up, if I crank down maximum edge length, let's say the model's three inches long, let's say I do uh, 0.04 of an inch and preview that. We're going to get a little bit higher polygon count. See this went from 70 to 90 and we're also getting a denser mesh because the longest one of these can be is 0.04. All right. You'll see that it also is is reducing the amount of long polygons. Remember we had some kind of longer polygons in here. If we crank that down further, obviously what's going to happen? The polygon count is going to go from 90,000. It's most likely going to double ish. So we're 147,000 now. And you'll notice that we've got really nicely spaced quads throughout the whole model. Okay. So if I look at this in perspective, you'll notice that this model is starting to get, starting to, to do what I call blacken up, meaning that there's areas that when viewed are starting to kind of fill in. And that is a decent indicator to me that we're starting to get a good mesh. All right. The the polygons are evenly distributed. They're uh, nice and dense, but not crazy. If I zoom in on it, it's not completely black. But if I zoom out a little bit, there's some areas that are starting to blacken up, which means that this for me, a gut check would be this would be a good mesh. So I'm going to just say, OK. All right. It's going to go ahead and accept it. And it's going to bring up one more dialog box that's going to give you the, the export options. Okay, this is the most important thing in the whole box here. Export open objects. You do not want to check this. If you check this, Rhino will kick out, you will allow Rhino to kick out a non-watertight mesh. All right, we don't want that, so we always want to leave this open. And I always send them out binary as opposed to ASCII. ASCII, they're written in, in text. In binary, it's ones and zeros. So I always send them out binary. Um, they also tend to be smaller. Okay. You do have one more chance to ad adjust the mesh here. If you do hit the adjust mesh, it brings you back to this dialog box. Um, but we'll just say, OK, it's going to mesh it. And then leave that off. You can also set this to always use these settings and do not show this dialog box again. But I'm a superstitious creature of habit when it comes to selling to setting this stuff out as a consultant this is usually the last time I'll see this file and so I'm extraordinarily paranoid about making sure that what goes off my desk is is bulletproof bomb proof and can go to any printer and not have a problem so I I always go through the steps I never shortcut this stuff all right so we're just gonna say okay and poof out it went so that mesh in fact we can open it back up and take a look at it I'll just import it and to be honest with you, I do this a lot, actually. I will actually go back and reopen my meshes back into Rhino to make sure that they're good. All right. So that's the mesh that we created.
And if we shade it, you can see that it's a really nice high quality mesh. That will print nicely. Okay, one last check if you're paranoid like me. So open mesh. No object added to selection. This is the brow wiper where you go, whoo. <laughs> All right, this is not an open mesh. This is good to go. All right, so if you created this, this off of this model, you can send that to a printer and rest easy. All right, any questions on that so far?